I play a guy who is um, dating Brian Cranston's uh, daughter. I'm a video game app designer. Uh, I'm very successful, but I'm a little um, unpolished and rude, and um, I have a lot of tattoos and use crude language, and and so I'm everything that um, Brian Cranston's character wouldn't want in a son, or he's, you know. And so I ask him for his blessing um, because I want to ask his daughter to marry me, and he refuses, and um, and so I spend our Christmas holiday trying to, to win him over. Essentially, Laird is not a bad guy. He's like a really nice guy. And so I just said, you know, John, we need this guy, at least initially, to be very frightening to a father, you know? And one of the ways to do that is to make his exterior seem frightening because actually inside he's he's everything that you'd probably want in a you know a son-in-law and there was this gag that we had been wrestling with um, from the beginning about Laird trying to do something and when he initially meets the family that he thinks is a um, sort of a gesture of solidarity or you know and or welcome and they read it completely differently. And so there were a lot of different incarnations of that, and, and finally we settled on the idea that he would get a tattoo of the family on his back. And then, and then John added on that that um, he just had a, a holiday card of the family. That's the photo that he used, and so the tattoo artist put in happy holidays. On I think he really had a blast on this because he hasn't really done comedy since Malcolm in the Middle, and uh, which is what over ten years ago. And so, um, I think it was a real. I think he, I think he had a great time actually. Um, and you wouldn't expect that Brian is sort of the one to like push the envelope. Like he always makes a suggestion that's for a scene that's just too far. Not not only for his character, but for everybody. <laughs> and um, I love that. I mean, I love that it's Brian. John works in a similar way to, you know, what I do on the Seth Rogen movies. There is a lot of room for improvisation. You know, you start with the script and then sort of roll from there and see what you find. And um, and you, I guess you always want, in that situation, you always want somebody that can give good suggestions. You know, if you're riffing and then they can sort of build on that, you want somebody like that behind the camera to kind of help support you. What you want from a partner is, you know, for them to sort of open up some, some sort of um, possibility to riff on, some, something new that's may, not quite in the script, and then you build on that. And um, yeah, there's there's nobody better than than Keegan, you know, and 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 Megan, and even and, and Brian, to, you know, at, at doing that kind of thing, and John. So it's sort of like a power team. Originally, it's sort of the the big moose scene, you know, and the fight and the leads to the the moose tank um, was so much simpler. And I remember John saying on that day, like when the after the whole great room is flooded with, you know, the, the moose water and the moose has come out and the balls are in Scotty's face that John kept saying, you know, originally this was so simple. It was just Ned kicking the sculpture, nothing happens, and he walks out. And it turned into this whole fight and parkour in the living room and falling into the moose tank and... Um, it's just perfect because it's you know it's it's all the different threads that we've we've been developing throughout the movie kind of come together in that in that moment. I think the first thing that brought me to the movie was um, John Hamburg. He was actually my teacher at NYU um, he, um, when I was there for um, the the graduate filmmaking program, and he unfortunately was the 
was my teacher the semester that I was doing 127 hours. So I wasn't there a lot, but we talked a lot and I got to know him on the phone. Um, but um, he was sort of the initial thing that drew me to it. I liked his movies and I liked his writing. And, um, and then um, I heard, he told me that he was thinking about Brian Cranston for the, for the father role. And um, I saw Brian, I didn't know Brian, but I saw him backstage um, on the last episode of the Colbert Report. And, um, and he said, hey, I heard you might do this and I might do it, um, what do you think? And so we started talking and he's just, a, you know, Brian Cranston is just the greatest human being ever.